OK, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, you can see people have now joined, so hopefully we've got to, we've got most of our audience here and uh, the latecomers will have to sort of catch up as, as we go through. Um, uh, so we are now a few minutes past one o'clock, so I think we'll get things uh, underway. Uh, to, just to introduce myself briefly, uh, my name is Lee Gibson and I work in the Turing Scheme communications team at Capita. Uh, the first thing I'd like to do obviously is to thank you all for your interest in the Turing Scheme and for taking time out of what I'm sure are your very busy days to, to join us for this webinar and to learn more about it this afternoon. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping before we get things underway. Uh, and it is minimal as we're meeting virtually today, obviously. The next slide, Rich, thanks. Um, as you can see there, we've just asked, please, if everyone could uh, remain on mute and turn off their cameras during the webinar. And that will allow everyone to concentrate on, on the presenters and the slides that we'll be sharing. Also, as you'll see there, the webinar is being recorded um, and we will share that recording on our YouTube channel afterwards. So there's no need unless you desperately want to to be taking copious notes because you'll be able to refer back to uh, the recording and we will also be sharing the slide deck as well. OK, so I'm sure some of you uh, will already be aware of the Turing scheme, may well have applied possibly last year and possibly even been funded last year, but equally I'm sure there are those among you for whom it's uh, it's a totally new thing and who don't know much about it at all. So hopefully uh, we've managed to strike a balance for you all um, with regard to that, with the information that we'll be sharing today. Uh, this is actually the second of three webinars which we will be delivering at this stage. Um, for the higher education sector, for FE and VET, and obviously for yourselves working in the schools sector. Um, as you can see on screen now, you'll be hearing from various people during the webinar from the Department for Education and ourselves at Capita, and as you can now see, also from colleagues at the Association of Commonwealth Universities who are working with Capita on the programme, particularly around the area of assessing the applications. Uh, the aim this afternoon is to offer a brief overview of the Turing scheme and its potential benefits for your pupils and your schools uh, to take a look at how applications will be assessed and offer a few hopefully helpful tips on how to create a good application, as well as flagging some of the support and resources that we have available to help you navigate that process. Uh, I should point out also that we're not taking live questions during the webinar mainly for reasons of time and practicality, but we are obviously very much interested in receiving your questions and addressing them. So to that end, if you are um, happy to do so, by all means share questions with us via the chat function while the webinar is going on. Um, if you'd prefer not to use the chat function, you can also email questions directly to us. Um, similarly, with questions that might occur after the webinar is finished, you can email, email those directly to us as well. Uh, turing scheme at capita.com is the uh, email address, but that will be, sh that will be shared later. Um, I'm sharing it now, thanks, Rich. And our plan then is to collate the, the questions that we receive and we will use those to create an, an FAQ document which will be shared on the website. And I'm sure that uh, they'll also be factored into other support materials that we, that we will produce going forward. Um, I think that is all you need to hear from me. So I will pass you on to the people that you're really here to hear this afternoon, the experts. And the first of those is Martin Cunliffe from the Department for Education. Martin. Thanks, Lee. Hi, everyone. My name's Martin and I work for the Department for Education, where I am the Communications and Stakeholder Engagement Lead for the Turing Scheme. I'll start by thanking you all very much for taking the time to attend today's seminar, uh, today's webinar, and I'll speak just briefly at the beginning to provide you with a bit of the policy context as we start the second year of the Turing Scheme, which will be supporting placements that take place during the 22 
23 academic year. Some of you will already have had experience of the scheme from the first year and for others this will be your first time planning an application. In either case today's webinar will help you to better understand how the scheme operates, how you develop the best possible application so that your pupils can take advantage of the life-changing opportunities that the scheme offers. Our core objectives for this year remain the same as last, which is to provide the opportunity for students, learners and pupils from all backgrounds to study and work abroad, supporting people from across the UK to become more globally mobile and culturally agile. Now funding for the continuation of the Turing scheme has now been confirmed for the next three years, including £110 million for the 22-23 academic year. To meet our aims as a global education and training programme, we expect all Turing Scheme projects to focus on four main objectives. These are firstly Global Britain, through supporting high quality placements, enhancing existing partnerships or forging new relationships across the world. Secondly, levelling up by widening participation and supporting social mobility across the UK regardless of background. Thirdly, developing key skills, offering unique opportunities that can be career building, give hard or soft skills that are sought and help your pupils bridge the gap between education and work or expose them to other cultures and different uh, situations. And then fourthly, value for UK taxpayers, which for us is all about optimising the social value in terms of the potential costs, benefits and risks. Now the Turing scheme is open to organisations from across the UK and the British Overseas Territories and is a truly, glo truly global programme. We want to enable you to develop and sustain partnerships across the world, which can provide the best opportunities for your students. When considering destinations across the globe, our only proviso is that all education providers managing mobilities should follow the relevant Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office travel advice, being aware that the situation can change rapidly. But beyond that, there is no specific targeting. If you can build a relationship with a partner overseas in any country in the world, then the Turing scheme can provide you with support for that. The past year has seen COVID-19 causing a great deal of uncertainty, especially around international travel. And I hope that those who've been involved in projects this year will already have seen firsthand how we've provided flexibility and additional options wherever possible to help projects deal with these pressures. Participants this year have nonetheless been able to undertake a huge range of interesting and engaging mobilities, and we look forward to seeing what your plans are for the year ahead. For this year of the scheme, we will be working with Capita, who've been awarded the contract to deliver the scheme following a competitive procurement process. We are confident that Capita have the capacity and skills to deliver the scheme. They have more than 35 years experience of supporting more than 180 local authorities and 21,000 schools, as well as being one of the largest IT providers to the UK education system. They will combine their capabilities in digital grants management, education and complex programme management to support you in delivering the life changing opportunities for the participants in the Turing scheme and our key call to you is to ask that you take advantage of the opportunities offered by the scheme and the support that's offered by Capita as you prepare your applications and define your projects. It's important to note you have everything you need already to prepare your applications available to you now through the Turing scheme website where the program guide and the application guide really cover everything that you need to get yourself started and lastly I'll just end to say I really look forward to seeing your projects develop and get delivered. I look forward to seeing what you apply for. Okay and now I'll hand over to the Association of Commonwealth Universities and Damien. Hi, hi everybody. Actually it's Andrea Smith at Capita but thank you Martin for that introduction. Um, when we have been planning the webinars for the different sectors we've really thought long and hard about the things that you might be interested in um, and we've taken advice from some of the people that we're working with and seeking advice from such as the school students and teachers network to think about actually the key messages we'd like you to take away from the time that we spend together. Um, I think it's really important therefore 
to think about the real benefits for schools and the Turing scheme. Um, it's a question that we want to really raise is that when we talk about the Turing scheme, we're talking about your schools, we're talking about your pupils. And we've tried to give you some examples here of the real benefits that the Turing scheme seeks to do, particularly to bridge the gaps for pupils who would otherwise be unable to go on school trips abroad and to bridge that disadvantage gap um, and uh, truly realise levelling up. So there's, a, there's five examples here of the things that we would really like you to take away in terms of the benefits of the Turing scheme for you, for your school and for your pupils, notwithstanding the experiences that um, going abroad and increasing that horizon view for pupils will bring to, as we talk about, utilise a very wide range of, of costs that will support those trips and to remove that burden from budgets and those parental contributions. Um, to really provide pupils with that focused time on the topics they're studying and you know and this covers all key stages within um, primary and secondary education across the UK um, to really identify how that these trips can enhance those relationships between yourself and your pupils as you see them progress and develop um, and experience new uh, new themes and and uh, experiences um, and obviously from a teacher's perspective understanding that the grants are available for accompanying adults for schools is how that expands their own um, continual professional development and opens those up to new pedagogical practices and approaches and we really wanted to use this opportunity to reinforce that message um, when we're talking about the benefits of the Turing scheme specifically for schools can we have the next slide, please? One of the key elements of schools when they are uh, looking to, to participate and apply for grant funding through the Turing Scheme is to find that in international partner for their pupils uh, to visit. Um, this, this extract is taken straight from our programme guide, which is one of our key resources to give you information about the Turing Scheme. And essentially, it just gets, shows you the, the wealth of flexibility that's sought to be incorporated when you're selecting a host partner organisation um, and also the constraints therein. But I think that it's been worded in such a way to try and make that as straightforward and give you the flexibility when you're selecting an international partner and a receiving organisation. Organization. Thinking about how then you might go about that, realising that for some uh, this could be a new experience and for others a path more well trodden. We've just tried to identify five um, hints and tips really in terms of how to identify and agree your host partner relationship and this is activity that we would urge you to take now as it is going to be required in the application process. We'd encourage you to use your existing relationships and those links that you've already established abroad. Examples of existing relationships within the UK may be those relationships within your own teaching and uh, learning alliances, uh, with your teaching school hubs, um, and obviously those that you've already contacted and made trips abroad previously to continue that, that working relationship. We'd encourage you to engage with your local council regarding town twinning, twinning initiatives that exist across the country. And also reach out to local universities who are, have a wealth of experience and dedicated departments to outward mobilities where they can facilitate introductions, as well as other cultural organisations and foreign embassies who can facilitate those introductions uh, worldwide. And we also have a wealth of pre, uh, case studies um, on the website that also gives you insights into um, previous mobilities taken in the first year of the Sturing Scheme. Um, social media also has a lot of information regarding successful mobilities for schools um, during, during the first year of Turing. I hope you found that helpful insight and information. I'm going to now hand you over to uh, the Associate of, Association of Commonwealth Universities who will talk to you about preparing for your application. Thank you, Damien. Thank you, Andrea. Um, so a quick, quick word on the Association of Commonwealth Universities because I'm aware it's an organisation that um, probably won't be um, familiar with uh, many of you. 
Um, so uh, the ACU is over 100 years old. It's an international organisation uh, that works with universities, higher education institutions um, across the globe with over 500 members in more than 50 countries. Um, so it has a, um, a global reach um, and extensive expertise in knowledge and delivering renowned international mobility and scholarship schemes. Um, including the UK government's Chevening, Commonwealth and Marshall Scholarship Schemes and the multilateral Queen Elizabeth Commonwealth Scholarships, QECS. Um, and that's really the, the backdrop to the ACU's role in respect of um, this round of the Turing Scheme because the ACU will be leading on the uh, assessment of applications across the, from across the three sectors. Um, so we start here with a slide about preparing for your application and um, it's really just to put in front of uh, prospective applicants the four uh, main sections of the uh, qualitative uh, application um, and these speak to the four policy themes that Martin introduced earlier. So we have some questions on international engagement, some on levelling up, some on achieving positive uh, social impact and value for money. Uh, and then there were a couple of questions uh, in addition on design and implementation around managing mobilities and monitoring performance against plan throughout the project lifestyle life cycle. Um, Andrew has mentioned already that there is a significant amount of guidance already online and um, we would all encourage applicants to look at this early. Um, the more uh, astute amongst you will notice that actually the qualitative assess uh, uh, the qualitative questions sorry for assessments have already been published in the assessment guide. So um, I really would urge everyone who's interested to get ahead of the process and to look at those two key documents, the application guide and the program guide uh, that are on the website. Um, You'll see also on the um, on that program guide the uh, scoring for each of the, the questions, but we can go into that in the, the at a high level in the next slide. Just to say um, that each of the questions that have a, a narrative um, that request a narrative answer will we'll have a 500 word limit. And my colleague Tracy will be speaking in a moment to uh, how applicants can um, ingratiate themselves with, with assessors in terms of providing clearly structured and well thought through uh, answers and uh, th that are um, readily uh, able to be assessed. Um, so if we can skip on to the next slide please. This is uh, just a little insight into uh, the weighting for each of those sections, just to say that international engagement carries a fifth of the marks, levelling up 30%, positive impact and value for money 30%, and design and implementation 20%. Uh, again, uh, the um, programme guide contains more detailed explanation on the approach to scoring, and the application guide also breaks down um, those scores by question. So next slide, please, Richard. And uh, at this point, I'll hand over to my colleague, Tracy Riley. Thank you, Damien. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Tracy Riley. My role is the widening participation advisor for the Turing Schemes Regional Pilot in Staffordshire and Derbyshire. Um, I'm a former head teacher and I'm a school improvement advisor for that region. I seem to have lost the slides. I'll, I'll go on to my slides just one moment. As long as you can hear me. OK, so top tips for successful application. So number one, read the programme guide. Program guide provides all the information that you will need, as Damien has already said, to check your eligibility for the funding and how to apply. Use all the application support resources available. They really will guide you in your application. Number two and three, know your priorities and plan ahead. 
The key here is to think clearly about the following strands. OK, so we have the context of the school or the setting and your learning objectives. And how that might relate to your school improvement priorities. Think about the potential long term benefits for the pupils and your setting. And try and give as much content to the actual activity mobility as possible. So thinking further. Positive impacts and value for money, you might think about how the project objectives will meet the needs of your school and the suitability to the needs of the pupils. And how might that impact be measured? Design of the project plan. Outline the practical elements of how you'll manage and structure the project and the types of activities that you will do and who will be responsible for them. And again, how will you evaluate it? International engagement. Be really clear on the potential benefits of engaging with international partnerships. And just to reiterate, there are existing partnerships and relationships that local universities can signpost you to. And what would be positive is that that local relationship that you could then forge with your university. And then in terms of levelling up and widening participation, describe how your project is targeting those pupils who are from disadvantage and send backgrounds and the potential positive impact that it will have on those groups, the experience will have on those groups. Slide four, five and six, uh, sorry, points four, five and six are more to do with the practical notes on the structure of your application. So in terms of writing subheadings to introduce different sections within each of the following answers will help assessors follow your narrative. Work smartly, so if there is information you'd like to provide that you think is relevant to more than one application section, then cross reference it. So instead of copying and pasting the same text multiple times. And number six, before you submit, take a note of your unique application ID and obviously check your application thoroughly. Applications may not be resubmitted. We only accept the first submission of the application. What I would say to finish is think quality, clarity and completeness of the project. Thank you. I'll hand over to Damien. We might just linger on that slide um, one moment, uh, Richard. Um, just I'm, I'm aware it dropped off um, just in case people were, were looking at it. Um, thank you. Thank you, Tracy. That's some uh, great, great tips there for a successful, successful application that probably won't be um, news to, to, to many of you, but um, uh, hopefully it, helpful just to um, hear that reiterated um, comments common sense much of it okay um, if we can move on uh, so we thought it would be useful just to give an insight into the uh, assessment process once um, the uh, submit button has been clicked um, so on the uh, through the platform as we receive uh, applications um, there will be there are a number of processes that need to be undertaken um, there's a, an eligibility check process um, once that's complete the assessments come through to the assessment hub and uh, our independent uh, assessors who are contracted on a, a self-employed basis um, uh, with the uh, ACU um, can start assessing in earnest. So we'll have 28 or 29 independent assessors uh, forming the assessment hub and four of these are senior assessors, um, one each for the three sectors and one on the thematic issue of skills or issues I should say of skills and levelling up. So the senior assessors uh, will be involved in the training of the rest of the assessors. That training uh, has been devised and will be rolled out next month. And the uh, there is a, a quality assurance framework that speaks to um, 
standardized scoring and a standardized approach across the board. So all applications are double marked um, and any discrepancies in, in scoring uh, will be picked up by senior assessors on a weekly cycle. And a proportion of all applications will be will have an additional quality check, especially in the first week of the uh, application assessment period. And this is just picking up on uh, good practice from the schemes that the ACU manages elsewhere, as I mentioned earlier. Thanks, Richard. If we could have the next slide, thanks. So, as I say, uh, the, each application will undergo a formal eligibility check against the eligibility criteria that are uh, published in the programme guide. Uh, and that will verify uh, that the application is compliant uh, with the Turing scheme guidelines. So please do check those eligibility criteria before you go to the, the lengths of applying. Um, a financial capacity check also takes place uh, concurrently with the qualitative scoring. And um, uh, the, the, at the very end of the process, um, at the end of the, the, uh, the fourth week of the assessment period, uh, a report will be sent to the DFE hosted Project Assessment Board. And that uh, Project Assessment Board contains representation from across the devolved administrations and the three sectors uh, and is the, the, uh, the, the body which ratifies the recommendations of the assessment hub in terms of the, the ranking of uh, applications. And Richard, I think at that point we can hand back to Andrea. Thank you. Thank you, Damien, and I'm sure you've already answered some of the questions that we've been seeing in the chat, so thank you very much for that comprehensive update. So I guess at the end of this session, what we'd really like to you to understand is then what the next steps are um, in order to apply for Turing Scheme grant funding. There are three things that we really want you to take away, and the first one is something that actually you can do now if you haven't already, and that is to register for the funding as part of our registration process. We've got a two step process to applications and they all begin with registration and that will also give you your own um, portal identity and account that will then enable you to further apply. That um, portal link is now available and it's on the home page right at the top um, of the Turing website. We've sought to design a really quick and simple registration process uh, that will set you up ready for application. So please do visit our website. And while you're there, it would be great if you would also sign up to the Turing newsletter. We have newsletters tailored to schools um, and so you can select your option there as well as select an option in Welsh should you need it. Then, then in the interim period, what we'd really like you to do then is really prepare your application. In order to do that, I think we've talked about and there's a really strong message here that there's a wealth of information on our website that will help you do that, uh, including frequently asked questions, our programme and our application guides that have been designed with, you know, you, our end users in mind. You can also contact us through our service centre and I'll talk a little bit more about the ways that you can contact us, but we're there to help and support you with any advice that you might have uh, that you might need and that we can help you with. Um, and then finally, you know, do go and plan your applications with your receiving partners organisations and within your school or your consortium of schools um, so that, that you are really fully prepared to enter that information digitally when the application form opens. And the application portal will open on the 31st of March. Um, there will be a link again on the website to help you directly uh, start your application journey. When we've thought about the application process, we've thought about end users in mind. And so it is a very guided application process with linked uh, questions. So that really takes you through end to end and you don't need to try and think about where you need to go next. 
We've also thought about making sure that you can save your applications for later and then pick them up and continue as your applications and as your mobility information builds. So register, prepare and then apply. Thank you. Can I have the next slide, please? And then we wanted to share with you your uh, the key dates around Turing. So as I say, uh, the registration window is now live. It went live on the 28th of February. That link is on the website and is available for you to start the registration process. Application forms will then go live on the 31st of March for you to enter all of that preparatory work that you've done in terms of where you're going to send your pupils uh, and when. And that window will close for applications on the 29th of April promptly uh, in order for us to hand over to that really rigorous and thorough assessment process that Damien and Tracy have told us about. And we will seek to therefore in communicate with you by the end of June uh, the outcome of your application. Can we have the next slide please? So just thinking a little bit more about those support, uh, those Turing scheme supports and resources, and they're really intended and designed to help you with a successful application. So we've got a dedicated and responsive service centre who are here to receive all of your uh, communications and they will also continue to inform our frequently asked questions because uh, our, often our questions are very similar and we can support you through the website. We've made sure for this year that you have a single email address for all of your inquiries um, so that you only have one email address to remember and we've kept that as simple as possible, turing-scheme at capita.com. The website has a host of supporting materials that we've talked about. The programme guide has been built and is intuitive so you can find specific, specific information uh, for schools um, and, an, and a full application guide that will continue to build as you go through your application journey. And again, we've got those links to the registration and thereafter the application portal straight from the website. So there's no need for you to try and remember the URLs that you're actually using. We've also ensured that when you have created a registration account and that your account is in the portal, there's a there's an actual a contact form in that uh, account for you just to go directly and email through that route rather than having to go to a different application um, system. And those emails do get routed straight back to the Turing Scheme Service Centre so you don't have to think about where they need to go or what email address you may even have to use. All of that material is available now and on the website and we'd really encourage you to download those as you enter this application journey. Thank you. I'll hand back over to Lee just to close the session. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, Andrea, and thank you very much for all of our other speakers this afternoon. Hopefully you have all found that uh, of some use in your Turing scheme ponderances and considerations. Um, just a quick reminder on screen there now that if you haven't posted uh, any questions uh, via the, the chat function while the webinar has been going on, you can, should you have other questions uh, or should questions occur to you later, email us direct on the address that's already been mentioned several times, touring capitacom with your questions. And as I said earlier, uh, we will collate and consider those and uh, they'll be used to help us um, shape and build and adapt our FAQs going forward, uh, which will be published on the website. And again, as I said, probably also inform other support materials that we will be delivering in due course too. Um, I just think if you can move on briefly to the next slide, which as well, and again, as has already been mentioned, if you would like to keep up to date with the latest news on the Turing scheme, then we would uh, uh, highly recommend that you subscribe to our sector specific newsletter for the school sector, obviously in the case of this group, um, but also and, and not mentioned on there, we are on the usual social media channels. So again, you can keep up to date with things if you choose to, to follow us on uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram and YouTube, I believe we're on at the moment. Um, other than that, I think the only thing that remains to do is to thank you very much once again for your attendance. Uh, I wish you well for the rest of the afternoon and reiterate again what has been mentioned a couple of times that we look forward very much to hopefully 
working with you and uh, receiving your applications in due course. Thank you very much.